welcome to another episode of the family vlog. I am Jay, this is my wife Amy. Since she wanted to introduce herself, I just want to say thanks for checking in on episode 5 of the family vlog. Uh, we're excited that you've taken a few minutes of your day to come and hang out with us. Um, Happy New Year! This is our first official uh, family vlog of the new year, so I uh, hope your 2016 or 2016 is starting off well for you and your family, and uh, we're hoping to come to you guys every week as much as we can uh, with the family show or the family vlog. Uh, talking about different topics and things that relate to the family uh, and whatever family situation you find yourself. Um, so what we want to do is, uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, one of the goals of this vlog, I feel like we need to say this for a little while until people understand who we are, what we're doing. Um, the, the purpose of this vlog is um, for us just to talk about family stuff. It's not a, a crazy vlog where we're running around with the camera with our kids. It's not, uh, you know, making stuff up on the spur of the moment and trying to figure out what we're doing. We're just coming to you sharing our story uh, as we raise our five kids uh, in the course of life and full-time ministry, um, very active calendars, and all the fun stuff that comes with it. So uh, by no means do we claim to be experts. We're just two parents who are trying to figure this all out as we go and are trying to share what we know and what we learned um, and what we're doing. So, so thanks for tuning in. Um, we do have uh, two topics today. Um, uh, the, the Warners, who are vloggers who watch our family vlog, uh, opposite of this, we do do a um, kind of an almost daily weekend type thing where we do run around with our kids and take pictures and vlogs of our lives. Um, but they said, hey, a great question or a great topic to maybe talk about is how we met. And so since it's the beginning of the new year, why not tackle that right off the bat? Tell people how we met. We'll begin telling our story. And then you can know a bit more about who we are. So who actually started? I know my sister gets full credit for getting us together. Yeah. And I'm not sure who she worked first. I'm not sure if it was you or me, but she worked both of us and got us together. All right, so you tell uh, your side of the story, um, and then I'll tell my side of it, and then we'll tell how we get together. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right, so we were camp counselors. Um, our denomination that we grew up in, in our church, um, would run summer camps and winter camps, and Jay and I were both camp counselors, but at different times. And then one winter camp, um, we actually were both counselors at the same time, and that's when um, we met face to face. Right. And from there, we started actually writing letters because that was before. This is before email. email. Well, you had well, email at school. You had, you had email, email, but it school. wasn't like not everybody used it. I'm not even sure I knew how to use it at that point. I think um, it was more like if you were in a company or a business, yeah. or if you were in a, a college or university. Yeah. It so was actually like, snail mailed yeah. letters back and forth because he was living in Bal Philly, Philly and I was living Philly. in Baltimore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so after camp, that's kind of how we communicated. We talked on the phone a little uh, bit. Once or twice. Once or much. twice, not much at all. Um, but really, really built our relationship on letters, I think. Yeah. So that that summer, that following summer, so we met uh, in January at a winter camp, and then that following summer, um, or that same summer, summer we went 2000, 1994. Yeah, 1994. Um, and then we went on a mission trip to Puerto Rico with our church that's also. Summer. So that's how we kind of started dating there. Even yep. though that's not really encouraged to start dating on your, <laughs> your mission trip. Well, if you're going to fall in love with somebody, it's best to probably do it on a true. mission trip when you're doing I guess. Yeah. faith stuff. Yeah. Church stuff. Yeah. I mean, sure. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so. I mean, we encourage our students to go over to church because girls will be there and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to meet somebody, that, how many people have we, how many do we know who have met their spouse a lot. via camp? Yeah, there's we know a quite lot. a few that we're, we're friends with we're on, name, yeah, name them, but, on Facebook that yeah. um, either we were their counselors or they were counselors with us. Um, quite a few. Or they were cool. 
PSC and it worked for us in another yeah. way. But we didn't have anything bring, yeah. we're not bringing them together, we're just right. saying people fall cool. in love at camp and people fall in love with mission trips yep. and, and it's probably a really good place to start. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's how we met. That's how we met. So it's I don't know. I like to, two I'll years like later to, we're married. I like to tell the part that you know, Becky kept on telling you that you had to meet me and then she'd come home from camp and she'd tell me that I have to meet you and and just that back and forth and yeah, so I guess it's a fun story. We're we're a camp couple. So Becky, this is your fault. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, the other topic we wanted to talk about, um, we actually recorded a Christmas show that we were trying to get out before Christmas. Just talk about some of the, the things that we do, the traditions that we've started, the practices that we have, um, you know, being in ministry and raising a family and then celebrating Christmas, it, it creates a unique opportunity for you to do Christmas a little differently. And so we actually talked about all those things before Christmas um, and uh, just didn't get them edited and up before Christmas in, in, in enough time. So, um, but we, we changed something about Christmas this year. We, yeah. we, we did something different and we, we were really excited about it. I'm, I'm actually really stoked about it. Me too. I, I, after it's all done, it made way more sense than what we've been doing before. And it, I think for you, it made it easier. Yeah. And it's kind of sparked in me more creativity for next year. Yeah. Um, so we, we thought we would talk about that since Christmas is over. Um, talk about some of the things that we've done uh, a little differently this year. And that really is in the way of our gift giving. We changed how we gave gifts to our kids this year. Yeah. So beforehand. In years past, we've had them, you know, just like everybody else, to make a list for Santa or for us um, yeah. or for grandparents. Depending on how you do it. Yeah. yeah um, for things that they would like to have for Christmas. Um, and, you know, when you have five children and you're in ministry, um, sometimes you, and I'm sure everybody probably has to deal with this at some point, your kids are going to ask for things that there's just no way you're going to get for them. Um, maybe because you don't, for whatever reason, you're just not going to get them for them. So, we just realized that that is one of the things I think that breeds entitlement in our kids and we're really trying hard to fight off that. And so um, this year we said... Um, well, not only, before we get into this year, not only the entitlement, but I think it, it increases the pressure and the expectation for Christmas. Yeah, and on on their part and, and on our, our part. Yeah, and and so the focus becomes getting your kid the right gift yeah. that they want so that they have that perfect... And, and our whole focus of Christmas is not that at all. Like, we want Jesus to be the center of our Christmas celebration. And um, and really, the, and we want to give them gifts because of the love that God has given us. And we want that to be displayed in how we give gifts, right. not... Right. Not because not that I want a particular want. set of headphones right. or a particular device to work on, right. which is like the price tag's way out of our ballpark. Right. Right. And now the stress and the expectation right. to do this, they're expecting because it was on their list because Santa right. always brings the right gift. Right. We're, our expectations are high enough right. that we have to get this so that it's a good Christmas. Right. And it just all that stress just kind of funnels upward. Yeah. And it and it takes the joy. It really yeah, has taken the takes joy, the joy out of Christmas for takes us. Takes the fun. Takes the mystery. Um, um, and I think it leads to disappointment and yeah. crushed expectations. Yeah. Which we've seen in our kids. Yes, we have. We have. And that's heartbreaking as a parent because, of course, as a parent, you want to get your kid. You want to give them stuff. You want to give them things that they want. You know that they'll want and they'll enjoy. But that's not always realistic. Um, right. Right. It just in dealing with budgets and. And just life. I mean, it's just not realistic to um, create that expectation yeah. that your kids will always get what they right. want. So. so let's tell them what we did. Yeah. The change we made this year, there was no list. Right. They there were not were. allowed to ask for anything. Nothing to us, um, nothing to Santa, nothing to Grandma and Grandpa, yeah. um, uh, yeah. Granddad or Nana. Like, no, yet, no list. Yeah. No list at all. And so what that did actually for us was, one, we had to pay more attention to the things that our kids were saying. Yes. Because we had to kind of tune into those little cues that they would give as they right. saw things and as they talked about things as to what it is that they might want. But again, that builds expectations. So we didn't focus all on that. But what we also did is it forced us to become more creative in the things that we were giving and gave us the freedom to think outside the box a little right. bit and get things that we think they might like as opposed yeah. to the things or that need, they or, want. Yeah. Or, or, or need. Yeah. 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 So it, what I what I really liked um, is that it really, like you were saying, we had to listen to them. It really made us pay attention to who they are yeah. and what they're interested in instead of 
um, them just rattling off something that their buddies are getting um, and they want to be like their buddies. But for us, it was like, okay, let's pay attention to who are they and what's their personality and, and what would really bless them this yeah. Christmas. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so Christmas was completely different this year. Um, I think for you, you were way, oh, way more less. relaxed. Now, yeah. you've had relaxed Christmases when we, you know, we've done the list thing and you've right. gone through, you tried to get some of the lists and, you know, we don't always get them everything, but we, right. we did try to get them as much as we could uh, within reason. Right. Uh, but still, you have that kind of angst in you. Yeah. Will they like it? Will it go over well? Will they right. hate it? Uh, right. So this year, that was gone. Yeah. Um, and we just had an opportunity just to watch them open because... For the first time, we knew what they were getting, and they didn't. And they had no idea. They had no idea yeah. what they were getting. It was really fun. Um, and so that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I guess the, the lesson we learned from this Christmas in doing this is, um, again, we want Christmas for our kids to be more about but the the birth of Christ, and you know it really does become more about as giving out of a love for them as opposed to giving what they want or what they right. put and on. And less about center. them. Less yeah, about, them. about them. It's more about our love for them, yeah. God's love for them. Um, yeah, just all of that yep. instead of the whole gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. So that I can be like everybody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And, the, and so that has also translated into our birthday gift giving. Mm. Um, we started this year, our first child already had his birthday. It's actually today. Um, and so. Birthday, Asher. Actually, yeah. no, it was Monday because today it's Tuesday because they're watching oh, this on Tuesday. Okay, anyway. It was yesterday. So, it was yesterday. Um, <laughs> so what, it was really fun because it. It's also hard to have a January birthday when they're oh. like right after Christmas. But eleven days, at, well, eleven days after the New Year. Yeah, I do love that it has made us be more of a team. Um, whereas in the past, it's been usually just all me to go out and figure it out. Um, whereas this year on Saturday, we went shopping and we just thought, w what about Asher? You know, do we want to still give him or what? You know, and it was just really fun because, again, he had no expectations of what he was getting or what. You know, it wasn't yeah. about, it was about us and his brothers and sisters giving him stuff that we knew he would enjoy. Right. So. Yeah. And my guess, we'll talk about this again going into yeah. next Christmas, because it, it really, it was something we came in a little late in the game doing. Yeah. Um, but next year we'll talk it's about it more blessing. as we get into Christmas. But yeah, it was a great change for us and a, and a fun way of doing Christmas. Yeah. Um, we want to wrap up, and I, I'm thinking as we as we end this, uh, it'd be curious to see how you guys do Christmas. Um, for a while, we did the three gifts to kind of emulate the three wise men bringing three gifts. That's what we've always done in the past. That's mm -hmm. what creates some of that, that expectation and anxiousness there. Um, but what do you, what have you typically done? Do you do the list? Do you try to fulfill the list? Or do you do a certain number of gifts? Do you do it by dollar sign? Do you give each of your kids a certain dollar amount, and then you try to fulfill that dollar amount or do you just go super crazy and pour out whatever luxuries you can on your kids we'd love to hear what you're doing because um, again we'll probably talk more about this going into next Christmas um, because it was such a great thing for us um, hey thanks for again spending a few minutes with us today uh, thanks for watching uh, we would love to um, deal with questions and topics that interest you as you think about raising your family. Um, so please, in the comments below, uh, add your comments, leave your questions. Uh, we will do our best to respond to them and maybe one of your topics or questions will end up on one of our next vlogs. Uh, be sure to visit us on our family blog. We try to post something uh, almost daily. Uh, so little things that we're learning and experiencing as we're raising our family and the things that God's teaching us as we do it. Um, you can find us at thehighamfamily.com. If you like this video, would you do us a favor? Would you give us a thumbs up? We are new at this. We're just trying to figure all this stuff out. But our desire and our heart is we really want to encourage families um, from a biblical perspective um, in, uh, in you raising your family. And so give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments. And uh, have a great, great day. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next week right here on The Family Vlog.